It's Full Metal Jackie on the show with us once again. Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost. How are you? I'm doing really well, thank you. Uh, well, How are you? I'm doing well. It's great to talk to you. Uh, obviously, a lot has happened since we last spoke. Um, we'll talk about the good stuff, though. <laughs> uh, Ghost has an upcoming tour with Volbeat. There's a brand new song out there, uh, Hunter's Moon. Um, you know, Ghost obviously covered Enter Sandman from Blacklist. And uh, Tobias, the pandemic afforded musicians time to focus on writing music without the demand of touring. How much of an adjustment was it to be able to work at an actual creative pace? It, for me personally, and when it came to me creatively, I wasn't really smacked out of sync or anything because at least if, if we go back to March 2020 and we, we did our last show, that was the end of our so-called tour cycle. So it was already planned to go at least out of public, into at least from a public point of view, like a hiatus. And... I was basically booked into a, uh, not a real studio, but like a writing studio because I'd already started writing material. But when March came, the idea was for spring to be like writing and pre-producing the tracks. And then I was going to record in the summer 2020. And then the idea was for there to be some time off after the summer and then uh, start again in March, basically. So a year from then. What ended up happening was, of course, that the world sort of turned into this really weird zone of angst and uncertainty. And what it gave was me a lot of time to be with my family and to write more and write longer, uh, not necessarily longer songs, but um, just to get something that I hadn't really had in, in quite some time. And that was a little time to marinate on material and marinate on what, not necessarily what to do, because I already knew beforehand what was going to be, you know, what the, what the, t what the record was going to be about and what it was, the thematics of the record and the color scheme of the record and, and all that. That was already sort of predetermined, but what it gave was some time. And then what ended up happening was that we sort of pushed everything. So now, obviously, we're starting the tour in almost, almost a year later than we had expected but considering a lot of my friends obviously if we're just limiting down to, to the music business and, and a lot of my friends and colleagues who, who had to postpone and push and, and cancel and ugh, so I, I got off really really easy and I was blessed that I got off really easy <laughs> Well, uh, which I'm happy about because they, you know, not only for me, but for, for the, the sake of the record, it actually got better, I think. Sometimes I'm a little bit too optimistic and it's like, yeah, I can, I can just pull it off in three months. And every time, except for the first record, every other record between that and record number two, three and four was definitely stressed. It was made under stress. And even though I write all the time, um, but it, you know that the execution of a record was always sort of under the whip of a tour around the corner, and that's why more than often we have ended up mixing like very close to touring starting, and then we have the record coming out like in the midst of a tour and stuff like that. And that is not always optimal. That's not how it was planned originally. That's usually by mistake. Tobias Forge of Ghost with us from Ghost, Hunter's Moon on Full Metal Jackie Radio. It's Whiplash on 95.5 KLOS. It's Full Metal Jackie, Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost with us on the show this week. And Tobias, often your creative process is to collaborate on songwriting, then once in the studio, perform much of it yourself. What's the benefit to working at both ends of that creative spectrum? I think what it enables me to have something similar to a perspective, slightly objective that way, because I'm not, I'm a little bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to um, actual playing. I'm an able drummer, I'm an able bass player, I'm an able guitar player, but I'm not like, in, like a virtuoso of, of any of it. This time around, I, you know, we actually had a, another guitar player coming in, sort of mounting the massive work of actually redoing everything. Because I've felt like, again, I've played guitar all my life, but unlike most guitar players who are, uh, who are in successful bands, they play as they tour. They, you know, 
Kirk Cabot not, does not only play three hours every day on, on stage, he also plays four hours every day uh, in between, uh, whereas I am doing a whole slew of other things. So it almost feels like every time I sort of restart writing and I restart demoing and doing pre-production, I, I quickly have to go up to par again because there's been a few more years where I, when I'm to, on tour, for example, I play mostly drums actually because we have a, we have like a rehearsal room uh, in the back that we usually do as a warm up thing. Part of my sort of daily exercise is I play drums like an hour a day, but I sort of tend to forget to play guitar. So I felt like when making this record, I mean, making all the demos and all that, like that, that sort of free, that, that dictates what to play. You can always sort of figure that out. You can, there, there's always ways to, to sort of, uh, because you can redo, undo and, and piece things, piece things together. Uh, but when it came to actually like performing, I had a friend of mine, Frederick, who's uh, the guitar player from Opus. He's the sort of person who he plays five hours every day. He's so amazingly talented. So he can play circles around anything that I put on tape. He's like, I can play that easily. And, and he do, does it with flair. Tobias Forge with us. It's Full Metal Jackie. Still to come tonight, music from Danzig. We've got new music from Napalm Death. We'll check out a new tune from Loathe and have more with Tobias right after this. New music from Loathe, it's Full Metal Jackie. Tobias Forge of Ghost with us. And tell us more about sort of what the benefit is to being like the primary songwriter in the band. And the, the, the good thing about that is since I am not that sort of, you know, I don't play like one role in a band where there's like five other egos, it's easier for me to like, no, 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 the, the, we can skip the solo here. We, I can move this solo around. Wait a minute, I can, I can take this little bass part. I can do this little guitar part on the piano instead or on the organ. Try saying that to a guitar player. He won't, you know, if it's his piece, if it's his little thing, his moment to shine, that's going to cause problems. Whereas when you're doing it my way, or at least from my perspective, it's, you know, I, I can tell people that I bring in for a certain bit or a certain piece that I know that he or she will do better than I, I can just tell them what to do. But it's already been predetermined what to do. It's not like I'm like, oh, here's free reign. Here's five minutes. You can do whatever you want on it. And it gives me a little bit more of like a director's sort of perspective on things. Even though I sort of wrote the story, at least at least I can look at, at each individual. I mean, even when it comes to vocals, I can listen to my own vocals. I'm like, oh, that sounds like I don't like that. I, you know, I try to be as objective as I can. Obviously, when you're five months into making a record, you're, you know, I, I found that when we were making this one, and then that always happens. At least to me, it's like at one point or another, all of a sudden, my ears, I, I get, we, we call it hearing aids. Actually, that's when your ears sort of die. That's morbid and and maybe not funny, but that, that that's what happens. And all of a sudden, I don't like the record anymore. And uh, it was this moment in this, this summer. I was just like, I just came into the studio and I was like, my ears just died. I don't like this record anymore. And from then on, it was so much harder because I didn't like it. <laughs> because you get so tired of it. And then, you know, when you're in the, the aftermath of, of having made the record and you occasionally sort of listen to it just because you, you need to, you have these moments of, wow, it sounds better than I remembered. And then you hear it again a few days later. It's like, wow, this sucks. Uh, it's, it's a very painful process once you've gone over that little threshold. But I think that there's ups and downs of, of everything, pros and cons. But I, I think that generally when a producer or someone comes in and working with me, it's usually that person is really happy not to have like an opinionated band around me. That, that's really nice because you don't have to deal with someone less the classic endless pain of of most bands i'm not saying every band but most bands at some point you always have someone who doesn't really carry the weight and um that's very impractical sometimes and uh, luckily that would be me i guess <laughs> because <laughs> but at least I can sort of tell someone like, oh, I know this great keyboard player who can play exactly this little bit that I, I know what I want. I know how, what I hear. I, I can, we can fake it like that. But if we want someone who can, who can actually play like that, we can just call that person. We don't have to rely on our guy or girl to do that. But that is not to say that the band that I have live, they are really able, they're really good at playing. They're really good at playing and anything that I tell them to, which is fantastic. Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost, with us on the show. Still to come tonight, music from 
Saxon Voivod. We'll check out a new track from them. Josta's weekly pick from the pit coming up from Jamie Josta after this and more with Tobias. Stick around. It's Full Metal Jackie. Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost, with us on the show this week. And Tobias, the stories told by Ghost lyrics are vivid and thematic and often the last thing you write. For you, what's the most challenging aspect to writing lyrics? It's continuing to tell a story or something new. Most things that I write end up being cynical and kind of dark, which which makes obviously perfect sense because it's ghost, but sometimes I, I really feel like I, I have a hard time finding a, like a new way to, to say things. And I'm also quite antsy not to repeat rhymes or repeat phrases and uh, that becomes a hurdle sometimes because you, when you sit there and you write a you, there's a rhyme in there and, and someone in the room you know usually the producer or is like what's the word you're using there like oh it means it's this no that's pronounced like this and you're like what is it I mean that, that has happened to me like not so much nowadays but, but in the beginning of my career it was definitely a few moments where it was something that was mispronounced and I sort of made a rhyme out of mispronounced something and then you know sometimes you can make it fun like you know the Ramones did massacre took my baby away from me like you, you can you can you can f- around with it but you know sometimes like that it means that you're one minute from like singing the lyrics on the record so you quickly have to rewrite something or rephrase something that didn't sound good sometimes you write poetically and it looks good on paper but when you sing it it doesn't sound very well like the vowels are wrong or there's something in there it doesn't have to do with pronunciation or that it's just like the sound of the word is not good it doesn't flow well and when you have to rewrite something on the spot i find it very hard sometimes to to compete with my own will not to repeat rhyme i mean even if you if you pick my, my favorite example of this is like if even if you take like two big writers like bob dylan or lord byron like if you look through a ton of their lyrics their rhymes are basically the same it's a lot of you blue new uh, uh you know the, the, the rhymes keep repeating and i i'm allergic to that i really want to do new words all the time and that, that definitely is, ends up being a gargantuan task every time writing lyrics because you want to, I want to be, you know, equally delivering, but also not being predictable. And I definitely don't want to fall into the you blue new sort of <laughs> trench, which is really hard sometimes because there's a reason for those words and those vowels being repeatedly used in lyrics because they're like the best. And that screws <laughs> with your um, security sometimes because, uh, you know, I, I've, I've sort of set a bar of high horse English that I as as a being English being my second language as well and I'm, I'm not a poet I'm not a lot of these things and then and I sort of painted myself into a corner having to to do that every time so every every time I'm done with a record it's just like oh, so I just want to write gender rock instead it's so much easier to write about uh, yeah and that little detail you need to say something that is important as well which is not always easy Tobias Forge with us Coming up this hour, the Death Clock Brutal Pick of the Week, plus music from Death Angel of Mice and Men, and more with Tobias. It's Full Metal Jackie. We've got Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost, on the show with us this week. Uh, And again, so much going on. You know, the upcoming tour with Volbeat, and we've got that great new song, Hunter's Moon, out there. Papa Emeritus 4 is now a character in the gaming world, appearing in an Iron Maiden gaming event. What's more surreal, coming to life in a video game or uh, seeing yourself alongside Eddie? I don't really see it as me being in, in there uh, I mean this sort of connects with your previous question about the when I, when I mentioned the perspective like I don't see myself in the conceptual world of, of ghost visually uh, which is for me as, as a uh, rev- <laughs> actually relatively vain person who, who have been photographed in character many times but I don't like seeing pho- photographs of myself um, that enables me to sort of uh, look a little bit more objectively to, to onto the creation and, and 
I mean, I'd vomit if we had the same merch and the same sort of overexposure if it was my face on it, if it was me, like, there. So I don't see it that way. It, we, it, we lent our character to Iron Maiden, and uh, that alone is a great honor, but I, I, I see that as they lent, like, an extension of my work rather than myself. It's Full Metal Jackie coming up next. Mosaic from Of Mice and Men plus a member of Death Clock will be joining us for the Death Clock Brutal Pick of the Week and more with our guest, Tobias Forge of Ghost. It's Full Metal Jackie. Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost with us. Uh, Ghost and Volbeat are going on tour, co-headlining together. Tobias, what's the most important thing to consider when planning a stage production that needs to match the aesthetic of the music? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, for every, I mean, th that that is sometimes the hardest and sometimes the easiest way when you've established your repertoire over the course of five records and, and EPs and a few things, uh, you find yourself having to or you, you automatically start doing a few nostalgic things into your show that sort of needs to be there which helps because you have that as a guideline also from like a physical point of view we're we're uh we're quite a lot of people on stage and they need to fit they need to have room and they're also practical solutions that we've you know worked out over the years that you can't really alter that much you can only improve them but when once they're solid it's like that means you can't really change those without risking uh, an unfriendly sort of environment on stage. Luckily, I think that we, have, we still have a lot of cards up our sleeve when it comes to our stage show. I'm not saying that we didn't do well before, but what we've seen is nowhere near the, the to-do list. And uh, this time around, I feel that we, we're closing in on a, a, a new step. So the hardest bit is actually when you're doing with another band because they have a completely different agenda uh, and with their their thing and their legacy and their repertoire and their tricks and all that. And that's a little bit harder because you need to make everything sort of transformable. So, um, yeah, that's going to be cool. Tobias Forge, the man behind Ghost with us. See Ghost with Volbeat on tour next year. Tobias, always great to chat with you. Thank you so much uh, for being a guest on the show. Oh, likewise. Thank you for having me once again. Awesome. I really enjoy that. Thank you. Stick around because we've got more metal 